Well, the value-based players are in a long-term winning streak, and they're going to continue doing great. During the pandemic, after whatever, they're going to do great. So we already have seen big increases in the stock prices at Target and at Costco. So it's kind of a little late to bounce into those names. Having said that, they're obviously going to perform great. But you've got a bunch of other value players where the stocks aren't out so much, but the companies are fundamentally sound, and they're doing great in this economy where all boats are rising. Those include TJ Maxx and Dollar General. Amazing companies, long-term winners. Uh, by the way, it also had Walmart and Amazon, two stocks that provide great value to the customer every day, recognized as having low prices, whose stocks have not gone through the roof this year, that are big opportunities also. So, you know, value has been the name of the game as the consumer has kind of bifurcated. You know, luxury is doing great. Everything else has migrated to mass, mass merchant channels and value-based channels. I, I'm surprised to hear you positive on Amazon. I don't know if that was allowed from a, you know, from a, a, a physical stores guy historically. But, of course, like you said, the stock has been struggling, and they themselves are trying to figure out whether to go uh, more bricks and mortar to match their online strength. wanted to ask you, you mentioned luxury. If you think uh, further crackdown in China could be an issue there? Well, certainly it's, it's uh, an overhang of some sort. But that's more for the manufacturers. So you think about the branded companies based in France, companies like that, that are, that are making goods that they're selling over there. For the retailers in the U.S., this is an amazing market. And, the US, you know, it is highly correlated with the stock market, which, as we know, has been on fire for a long time. So they're going to do great uh, uh, for, forever. What happens in China? Different story. If they're really serious about making that economy more equal, then you could see some issue there for the, uh, for the French manufacturers. Explain to me why you say this one really jumped out at me, that, that essentially there is no Delta variant impact on retail. Well, I go even farther. There was no summer slowdown in retail sales. It drives me crazy every time I hear that, that somehow things went bad in July and they're good in August and all that kind of stuff. Look, the only way you can really see these numbers in a clear light is you have to build on a solid foundation. The last time we had a solid foundation was pre-pandemic. Go back to 2019. Look at the same months in 2019. In August in 2019, compared to this August, where the data, the data just came in, sales are up 18.6% over a two-year period. If you had told me two years ago that sales would be up almost 20% two years later, you know, I would think that the economy was going great guns and consumers were spending like mad because they are. Now, what do you think those numbers are for July? This may blow your mind. It was 18.6% for the two-year stack in August. It was 18.3% in July, almost identical, the same increase. So the difference is we see where, oh, it was down in July. They're comparing that to June. Oh, it's up in August. They're comparing that to July. Those are weird numbers. We see huge revisions coming out every time they take a look at it. That's because the Delta, the, the uh, coronavirus and the huge swings that have taken place have totally distorted the ability to seasonalize these numbers. The smartest thing to do is take pre-pandemic two years ago, current number, and what you see is a very robust consumer. That's what I tell all my clients. That's what any retailer worth their salt is doing. They're seeing how they're doing compared to 2019. Mm -hmm. That's why last month I told you those numbers are good for July. And then you saw huge numbers coming out of retailers as reported for the quarter.